is Canadian country singer, songwriter, Kimberly Dawn. And she's here today to talk about her passion for music, how it began, what is next for her, and how she juggles motherhood. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be on here with you today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so tell us about when your passion for music began. Was it acting that you wanted to do before or? It was, it was, um, I did move out to Los Angeles to do acting, but my passion for music started at a very, very young age. So when I was about four years old, I saw the movie Grease with John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> and I would say at that point in my life, I like wanted to, that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I just sang, I grew up singing. Um, we had a piano at my house. I did take piano lessons at a really young age. Um, just for, for a minute though, because I was one of eight children. So that's a lot of kids. Um, so I did play for a little bit, but then I just always sang. I would sing in my bedroom. I listened to all kinds of music. Um, I grew up watching Elvis Presley movies because my mom was obsessed with Elvis Presley. So. I grew up, you know, so a lot of the movies I watched were a lot of the singing and the acting, and I just, I loved to sing. So I would say singing started at a very young age. Yes, um, Dolly Parton, you you grew up listening to, and, and it was Grease, right? Grease, that, that was great. Yes. <laughs> so, and all movies. I mean, I wasn't even born yet when that movie came out, but, you know, it was like, but I just remember seeing it when I was like four years old and I think it was on TV or something and I just remember loving that movie and the music and singing those songs and you know that's kind of where I think it started. Yeah it's just wonderful and do you come from a family of musicians? I don't so that's what's so funny <laughs> is, is growing up I felt like I always threw myself into songs. So whatever was going on in my life, music was kind of like my therapy. I'd listen to music. I would just, you know, um, I don't know. I just always listened to music. And like I said, we had a piano in the house and I always loved the sound of the piano. It was very soothing, very comforting for me. Um, so that's kind of, I think for me, music was just always my solace for me. Yes, and I read your um, an article about I mean, I find it so inspirational. You moved from a small town, Alberta, to LA. What was a pivotal moment to say, I'm leaving? I'm leaving the, it was a hobby farm or? or it was a full on, my dad still, he still has the farm. He grew sugar beets, wheat, hay, beans. I'm total like farm. I mean, we had cows, horses, you name it. It was a full on farm. Yes, and so did you do, like you probably did chores, like, you know, cleaning. <laughs> it, not only did I do chores inside the house, my dad worked me in the fields. We all were out, I'm one of eight, and all five of the girls came first, and then he got these three boys, but he had all of us girls working. So I would be out there moving pipe, and for any of you that watch um, the, t the TV show, like, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, shoot, it's no, I, not... Yeah. Yellowstone. Yeah, okay. I th okay. Yeah. So, like, I'm watching Yellowstone and I'm like, that was me out there in the fields and driving the tractor and moving the pipes. And, you oh. know, so I grew up with like hard labor work, not just like, oh, I'm going to like just clean the kitchen and help out around the house. I did do those things too, but I literally worked at the farm. <laughs> wow. And, what did you, like, I mean, I should say, what did your parents think when you said, I'm leaving, I want to go to LA and become an actor at so first? <laughs> it's, funny. it's so funny because I guess growing up, you know, you'll say things and I used to forget, I guess I used to tell everybody, oh, when I'm 18, I'm moving to LA. I guess I said it all the time from the time I was little, yep, I'm going to move to Los Angeles. Now my mom was born and raised in Los Angeles. Um, she met my father in college and then they moved to Canada cause he's Canadian. Um, so we used to come down to California in the summers to visit my grandparents and I just loved Los Angeles. I just always loved it. So seeing these movies and watching actors on TV and singing, and I'm like, that's where I want to be. So it's funny when I did finally say, I'm going to move, my dad looked at me and he said, no, you're not. And I said, I mean, <laughs> dad, I can go, <laughs> you know, oh. and I think they just, 
because you have to realize, you know, when you grow up in such a small town and that's all you've known, you don't understand when you actually step foot into a city like Los Angeles, the population of Los Angeles, I think is bigger than the population of all of Canada. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's, and it's, it's a, it's a condensed area, but there's a lot of people. And I remember when I first moved here, I was so excited, but then all of a sudden I was like, wow, this is a little much, all the people, the traffic, the drive, you know, it's a lot. Um, so it took me probably six months to really kind of acclimate to the life here because I wasn't used to that. I was used to like gravel roads and open fields and <laughs> just a very different life, you know? Um, so it, my parents, I think had a hard time when I first decided to come, but I came out here. My grandmother was living out here. I moved in with her at first for, um, probably the first year, um, just to kind of get myself acclimated to everything out here. Um, and you know, it, the rest is kind of like, I started doing the acting thing and I did love it, but I was also singing too. So I continued, um, you know, with the singing, but acting is what I was kind of focused on. Um, but that kind of took a turn. And I realized at the end, music was more of what I wanted to do. And listen, I can incorporate acting, obviously in music together, but where my passion really lies is within music because I realized that that's just who I am. You know, mm -hmm. the music's inside of me. I want to share that. I want to get it out. Um, so I think it took a lot of like little things and little steps to kind of point me in that direction of like, this is what I should be doing. And this is what I need to do. Yeah, it's wonderful. So tell us your first performance. What was that like? Well, I'll tell you, it's fun <laughs> because um, I remember it was a dive bar down in LA, like in Hollywood. And I'm telling you, every artist needs to kind of experience doing this kind of stuff because, you know, you grow from it. I mean, it was like a rainy, rainy, like November night. It was dark. It was cold. And it was this tiny little like I said, little dive bar. And I went in there and it was kind of an acoustic set. It was me. And I had someone playing guitar for me. And um, I had all my friends kind of come out. There was probably like 25 people that drove out in the rain. And, um, you know, listen, it was not my best performance. The sound system wasn't great. There's so many things that were just kind of off, but it was good for me just to kind of get myself out there and just do it. Oh, wow. yeah. and now you have three albums, right? Is that correct? I have, yeah, I have a Christmas album out. I had an album called Night, uh, Day and Night. And then I have a third album that's going to be coming out early next year. Great. Yeah. Great. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, I want to talk to you. Well, I'm going to talk about Nashville. I mean, yeah. I love the song. I've been listening to your music, Nashville. Tell us, where did you get your inspiration to write? So, um, so when I moved out to LA and then I started working with, um, this one producer in particular. So after I, you know, my story is like, after I had all four of my kids, I kind of wanted to jump back into something for myself. Um, and I got married really young. I had all four of my kids by the time I was 30 and then I hit 30 and I was like, what else is there? You know, I'm a mom and I wanted to be a mom, but I was like, I was somebody before I was a mom. I was somebody before I was married and I had to do some soul searching. And that's kind of where the music kind of came full circle for me. I started taking piano lessons at 30. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start taking piano lessons again. The piano brings me solace. It's happy. So I started taking piano lessons again and loving that. And then I met a producer and this producer, the one good thing I got from him is he said, you need to write your own songs. And I was like, um, I don't know how to write a song. He's like, you're gonna write songs. And so I did, he teamed me up with a girl and she and I started writing a bunch of songs. And it's funny because I remember actually as a young girl, I wrote a lot of poems. I like to write, I've always loved writing. So a song is just a story, you're writing it down. And so I've always had that in me. And I realized that as I was doing it, Oh my gosh, I've always been a writer of some sort. And um, so I'm so grateful for that because I've continued writing my songs. Like, so all my music, I do write it. 
Wow. And where do you like where do you get the inspiration to write? Like do you have a favorite place to write? Like how you know what? Um I get inspiration from so many things. I get inspiration from things going on in my life or past experiences that I've had. I uh, write about people's experiences. Like I can have someone tell me a story and I'm like, wow, like that's a that would be a great song. I can hear someone talking to me and they'll say one thing. They might say like two words and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a great song title. And I can rhyme with that. And that's happened before. That's happened many times where someone says something. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a great song title. You know, just kind of go with that. So. But you were talking about Nashville. Um, that song was actually, I wrote that song probably five years ago. And I had been to Nashville like like once or twice, um, just to visit and went with girlfriends, but I always loved it. And I knew that I wanted to be able to go back to Nashville and actually spend time there writing and you know making music in Nashville. So the past two years, I have been traveling back and forth from Nashville. Um, and writing, and I recorded my album in January in Nashville, right before the pandemic hit. So it was funny when I wrote Nashville, I hadn't been traveling back and forth from Nashville, but I knew that I wanted to go there. So it was almost like I put that out in the universe that, you know, Nashville's where I want to be. And, you know, and so that song was really fun to write. And then it's also so fun for me to sing because Nashville's like a second home to me. Um, I love it. I haven't been back since the pandemic hit and I miss it so much and um, I'm dying to get back there, but um, it will happen soon enough. Wow. And Nashville is regarded as a music city, right? And I mean, but what drives you, Kimberly? Like, I mean, you're a mother of four um, and you're successful in your music and, and like, how do you manage it all? You know what, it has taken many, many, many years and I still have not mastered it, but you know, thankfully, um, especially in the past two years, so I was doing pop music before, living in LA, doing country music, um, was hard. I mean, there wasn't a lot of people out here, producers, um, just people that really were in the country genre that could actually help facilitate in that. And so when I started going to Nashville, my goal was to really like, be writing with artists that were in the country genre, um, you know, work with people that were producing country artists. And so my husband, thankfully, we kind of tag teamed where he was like, okay, he was traveling a lot. Um, as long as he was home, I would be traveling to Nashville because I was going once a month for at least a week. So we kind of would just kind of like, okay, I'm going to go to Nashville during this time. Are you going to be home? So it's been, you know, managing that because, you know, kids are in school, you're juggling all of that. And, you know, thankfully being able to have friends that could help um, with the kids as well. So it is, it's like, it takes a village to raise a family. It's a fact. Yes. And support too, right? It's, yeah. it's like, having that um, support, as I said, and, and keep striving, keep believing in what you're doing. And were, were there a time or any obstacles in your way where you're like, you really love what you do, but at the same time, it takes so much, you know, effort, if you will, or you, you're kind of like, I don't know if I should do this anymore. Like, I mean, being successful, there are some roadblocks, perhaps, or obstacles, which. Oh, yes. I mean, there's been so many of those. I mean, I've had a lot of ups and downs, you know, the music business is a tough business. I tell people like, you know, it's so wonderful to be able to create and make music, but to continue pushing through, um, it's hard. And yes, there's been times, there's been a couple of times and one in particular, I remember I was, I decided I was going to quit. I just, you know, um, my kids were still pretty little, like right now, my youngest is 15. So, you know, they're getting older, but he was, he was pretty young. He might've been about nine or 10. Uh, no, he was probably even younger, maybe like six. Mm -hmm. And we were away on vacation and I was just going through something and I just was feeling, um, you know, all those voices in your head. Why are you doing this? You're not talented. Um, you, you know, just you're, you're hearing all that and some stuff had gone down and some stuff had happened. And I had to really go inside myself and say, you know, why are, why are you doing this? Are you doing it for recognition? Are you doing it because you love it? Like, what are the reasons why you're doing this? Mm -hmm. And I remember I went for about six months and I was really in a deep depression about it. 
And my husband one day just said to me, Kim, if you really love the music, then you got to do it and not worry what anybody else thinks or what anybody else says. And it was kind of at that moment that I gave myself permission to continue doing what I loved. So um, because I really, I, I had basically just was like, I'm done. I, I quit. I'm not going to do this anymore. And it was really hard. It was, to be honest with you, it's like, it felt like a death for me. You know, mm. you know, it truly, that's the only way that I can explain it. Such a deep mourning. It felt like a death to me. And I was in a really deep depression over it. Um, but I've learned again, it's a tough business, but I do it because I love it. And honestly, not everybody's going to love my voice. Not everybody's going to love my songs. And that's okay. Yes. That's okay. That's what makes me different. You know, not everybody, you know, um, and I've accepted that. And I've also accepted, you know what, just not everybody's going to like you. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, Kimberly, I'm calling you Kim, Kimberly, but it's okay to call you Kim. <laughs> you know, oh, whatever you like. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's like you are an inspiration, your role model, and never give up give up on your dreams. I mean, you're just keep going, and and I'm excited to tell us about your new single called Ninety Three. Yes, yes. <laughs> tell us. Well, so Ninety Three. Okay, so I country music. I grew up listening to country music, but really didn't fall in love with it until probably the nineties. I just never really, I just didn't love it. And it was all of a sudden I heard Garth Brooks and I was like, oh, I like this sound. Who is this? You know, I heard Garth Brooks and then I heard Shania Twain and, you know, she's a fellow Canadian and, you know, it's like I started hearing just this different sound and I call it that 90s country music. And that's what made me fall in love with country music is that 90s country sound. So when I was in Nashville, this was about a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, I'm with two writers and I'm with um, Ma uh, Megan Barker and Greg Freya. And those are the two writers that are on the song with me. And I said to him, listen, I want to write a song about like 90s country music. I want that 90s country sound in there, but I want to write about the 90s and like bring that back because it was such wow. a pivotal year. And I think for a lot of people and I talk to other country artists and they say the same thing. Like when they listen to 90s country music, even now, a 20 year old could listen to 90s country music and there's a specific sound that's in there and it just brings it all back. So I said, I want to write a song. And so the song, the sound, you know, 93 is kind of what came came about. And we literally wrote that song probably in, in an hour and a half. Wow. Oh it, my goodness. It just kind of was mad. <laughs> yeah, because it, it sort of like, those were like, I don't know if you will, like simpler times where things were not so busy as it is today. And, and so I can relate to it and the 20 year old. So it's like, it's wonderful. And what's the feedback been like so far? You know what? The feedback has been great because like you said, I mean, when you look back at how things were in the nineties, it was simpler. We didn't have the cell phones. We didn't really, we didn't have social <laughs> media. Um, you know, there's a line in the song where I, I say, you tell time by, you know, what's on television. And that's true. Mm -hmm. We didn't really, you lose track of time, of, of time because maybe you're outside just like playing outside. I mean, I feel like nowadays kids are not really playing outside. I mean, I would be outside all day long, you know, playing in the fields, um, picking daffodils, you know, whatever it was. I was just busy, I was outside. And, you know, you lose track of time and all of a sudden it's like the end of the day and it's dinner time and your favorite show's on TV. So then it's like, oh, it must be six o'clock, you know, just a different time. And I'm grateful for that. But obviously, I'm grateful for technology, too, because obviously it's brought in, you know, the world together, especially during a pandemic where this stuff wouldn't be able to happen. You couldn't stay connected to people, um, even for me with writing to keep up with my music. I've been able to write via Zoom. It's not the same as being in person, but at least I can keep up with it. So um, I think 93 just has brought people back, especially during this pandemic, to what's important. And it's a simpler thing. And it's not being so crazy busy that you you know, can't enjoy life just to walk outside and enjoy the beauty that's out there. Take a deep breath, you know, not running around with an over, um, 
you know, overscheduling yourself. Yes. I mean, do you miss country life? I mean, you're a country music artist, but do you, you know, think, oh, it's simpler back home, but do you miss it at all? I do. I really do. And it's like, you know, it's hard right now because I can't even go up to Canada right now. So I can't even go up to see my parents and they're still up there on the farm. And, you know, and my kids haven't been up there for a long time up to the farm. And it's, I want them to be able to see it because I think for them growing up in LA in a very different world, it's important. I want them to remember like, this is how mommy grew up. This is like the life that I had. And so when I might get frustrated sometimes with, you know, I had to work for, for this and I had to do this and, you know, just the hard work and everything that I feel like not, I'm not saying all kids don't have it, but it's a different work ethic that I feel like kids nowadays have. Um, that I want them to understand why sometimes I'm hard on them, why sometimes I might say, you know what, the reason I want you to work hard is because you know what, I had to, everything that I had to do, I had to work really hard for, things just weren't handed to me. Um, Mm. And that comes with everything, even with, you know, when you're pursuing something, a passion that you have, you need to work hard. You can't expect somebody else to do it for you or make it happen for you. You have to make it happen for yourself. And I think that perseverance was um, instilled, in, you know, instilled in me as a young child by my parents, and mm-hmm. it just stayed with me. So I do miss being home and being on the farm, and um, just it's just a different, it's just a different feeling, and it's, you know, I love it. Yes, and so you also have a Christmas album, right? Um, releasing your Christmas song, uh, Christmas on My Mind. Tell us about that. Yeah. So, um, so that one, I've had that out for a little bit. We kind of just did a new like little release with it, but, um, I love writing Christmas songs. It's so fun. Christmas songs are really fun to write. Um, and they're just happy. So I love that because the majority of the songs on that album actually are songs that I've written. Um, there's definitely some covers on there, some favorite songs that I have that I, you know, Christmas songs that I love, but, um, you know, one of my favorite songs on that album is called a song called Christmas Wish. And, you know, it's funny because I don't always go back and listen to my music. It's like I put it out and then, you know, I play it, I perform it. And then, you know, I may not listen to it on a regular basis. I just don't. But I was listening to Christmas Wish. And um, that song is so relevant. It was written seven years ago, by the way. I wrote that song seven years ago in 2013. Uh And I was listening to the words of that song and it's so relevant for what's going on in the world today. Yes. Talks about just peace and love and, and, you know, my Christmas wishes that we can all just like live in harmony and have peace and love. And I just think with everything going on in the world and the state that we're all in, um, we just all could use a little more, like everyone have empathy, compassion, let's, you know, support one another, no judgment, no, you know, I just feel like we could have that. And so I'm just saying it was written seven years ago and I'm listening to it right now. I'm like, it's so relevant for what's going on in the world today. And that's that's what's great about music. Yes. And you're going to perform. I am. I am. So I'm excited. I'm going to perform for you guys my, my single 93. Yes. So here we go. You know we wish I had a time machine Instead of staring at the side phone screen Take me back to another day Another time, another place Friday nights at the Texaco Meet there, then we hit the road Pull over when we find a spot, empty parking lot, maybe kiss a boy. Or not. I love it. <laughs> give me some of that 93. Give me some of that world of free. We measure time by the radio. You gotta get home to watch your favorite show and get back to the simple things. I can hear that old telephone ring. It's cold. Oh, 
but I miss me in 93. These days keep wearing me out. All this noise is a bit too loud. Wanna get a little lack of touch, unplug and just get a 90s Russian. Give me some of that 93. Give me some of that wild and free. We measure time by the radio. When you gotta get home to watch your favorite show. Get back to the simple things. I can hear that old telephone. Great. I mean, who is who is Kim Dawn? We found out. I mean, you shared your story, and I just so appreciate it. And what is next for you? Well, um, I'm looking forward to getting control over this pandemic, right? So that we can start putting up, <laughs> you know, more music um, and having tours and being able to do all that. But in the meantime, so I've been doing like some virtual shows. Like three weeks ago, I actually put on a live virtual show from right here in my studio at the house, just an acoustic show for an hour. Um, and I think I'm going to start doing more of those, which is good. And I'm still writing. I, you know, um, I'm still doing writing sessions, making music. So that's not going to stop. I'm going to continue doing that. Um, as well as my album is going to be coming out um, early spring of next year. So, um, you know, Nashville came out, 93 is out. Um, I'll probably release one more single and then we'll release the full album early spring of 2021. That's great. And I mean, do you do charities too? You do charity work as well? And I do. I do. <laughs> I, you know what? Um, it's, you know, I've always loved to just help and do that. That's part of, that's who I am. Um, you know, so I pick different charities that I, you know, I'm passionate about. Um, one that I'm involved with right now is actually three women. They're based out of Seattle. It's called Cancer Cartel. And all three of them have battled cancer. And what they started is a nonprofit to help people who are battling cancer right now to help take some of the financial burden. So what they do is they do grants and they will give money to these people to help anywhere from a mortgage payment to um, medical to, you know, there's so many things with cancer that people don't realize. It's not just the medical bills. It's maybe you have to move closer to the hospital because of the treatment you have. And now you had to pay for a hotel, mm -hmm. you know, so many things. So that is one that um, I just recently got involved with and I really love what they're doing. It's a very, um, they're starting very grassroots and I love that. And they are working really hard to really make a difference. And I love supporting that. Um, the other big thing that's really near and dear to my heart right now, and it has been for a long time, but I feel like it's become really um, even more out in the media, which I think is important, 
is the trafficking, the human trafficking. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, being a mom and having children and, um, you know, especially with daughters and believe me, I know boys are also trafficked as well, but young girls are trafficked more than the boys are and having two daughters um, and worrying about that. It's scary. It's really scary out there and having to constantly remind them, be careful this, be careful that. And um, I think there's a lot more light being shed on it these days. Um, And I definitely want to be a voice with that because it has to stop it, you know, somewhere it has to stop. It's, it's very scary. Mm -hmm. Kim, is there anything else you'd like to add? I just want to say thank you so much for having me on. And, you know, like I said, I, you know, I'm so grateful. Anytime I get to share my music, it just makes me so happy um, just to be able to sing a song for somebody, um, you know, because you never know who that's going to touch or who that's going to help. And for me, music has always been, you know, my therapy. It's always helped me through life. It really has. And so that's my gift to want to be able to share that with others. And if I can help anybody going through a difficult time, then, you know, I did what I wanted to do. Well, you are an inspiration and it's never too late to follow your dreams. You're a testimonial that, you know, believe in yourself and, and your passion for music. And, and if people want to follow you, where can they go? I mean, I know there's Google your name and we got, you know, the Instagram and Twitter and all that. But Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram. I'm at official Kimberly Dawn um, on Twitter. I'm official Kim Dawn. Um, you can find my music on iTunes. You can find it on Apple music on Spotify. I'm, I'm, I'm on Pandora as well. Do they have Pandora in Canada? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so, but But they have Spotify and Apple and Apple music and iTunes. So I'm all over that. Um, and you know, get my Christmas album too, guys. It's the Christmas season. There's, you know, lots of happy music on there too, just to kind of, help you through the holidays because I know it can be difficult for many of us yeah and I'm excited that you are releasing the Christmas album because we could all need that right now and yeah so thank you very much